Howdy y'all, in this video today, I'm gonna talk to you about antibody testing for COVID-19. Are you confused about it? Are you wondering, should you get it? Are you wondering, is it even worth it? Well, in this video, I'm gonna answer those questions. And at the very end, I'll give you my recommendation about whether you should get an antibody testing for COVID-19. Guys, let's begin. So for those of you guys who are joining, my name is Dr. Islam, and yes, I'm a poop guru. Don't forget to smash that like button to get more videos just like this one. So in the news, you may have seen a lot about the antibody testing for COVID-19. And I'm sure you may be wondering, should I go and get the testing myself? The idea is that if everyone gets tested, we will know exactly how prevalent COVID-19 is, how many past infections there were, how many people are at risk, and whether you may have had the virus in the past. I know I had actually thought that I got the virus a long time ago, back in 2019, God, it seems like ages ago, with some unknown viral illness. I didn't travel to China. I didn't get a exposed to anybody, but I was just wondering in my head, hmm, I got sick about six or eight months ago. No one knew exactly why. It was just some viral URI. Did I actually have COVID-19? These are questions people are asking, and I'm gonna answer these questions in today's video. So here's how we're gonna break down the video. Number one, I'll talk about exactly what happens when we're infected. Number two, I'll talk about what are actual antibodies. Number three, I'll give you some of the problems that we have with the current testing. And number four, I'll tell you exactly what my recommendation is when it comes to getting antibody testing for COVID-19. So what happens actually when you get the virus? So first off, you can only get the virus if you're exposed to somebody who actually has the virus and spreads it to you, either through coughing or through sneezing or some sort of respiratory droplets. Those droplets have to be breathed in and they actually get attached to mucous membranes. Once they get attached to mucous membranes, there are certain proteins on the virus that allow it to evade into a cell. So once it is inside the cell, it will replicate and spread all throughout your body, mainly in the lungs, because that's the area where we have the most mucous membranes. But as it's spreading, your body's going to try to attack it with your own immunity, and that attacking of the virus, you actually produce a protein called antibodies. And these antibodies are specific proteins that are actually made from your body to attack the virus. Now, if your body makes enough antibodies, you have the potential to get rid of the virus, but sometimes the virus can overwhelm your whole system where you can't produce enough antibodies against the virus. But not only that, the damage from the virus can be so dramatic that there's nothing that your body can do. Now, we always make antibodies typically whenever we have an infection, either that or we get a vaccine for an infection as well. This is how the flu vaccine works. You actually get a small dose of the flu virus, it goes into your body, then your body produces antibodies against that virus so that if you get exposed again to that virus, you should not get sick from that. Same thing with the chicken pox as well. We don't get the chicken pox twice because the virus that causes the chicken pox will initially hit us and once we get hit, we get the virus, we get the infection, we get chicken pox, but then we develop an immunity against that virus and so we don't typically get chickenpox the second time around. Now for any test for the virus, there are typically two different types of tests that we have. One is a qualitative test, the other one is a quantitative test. The qualitative test basically says, do I have the virus, yes or no? Strep virus, do you have it, yes or no? Stool infection, do I have this, yes or no? The second test is called the quantitative test. This is the actual amount of the virus that you have. So let's say that you have a virus and we know that you have it based on the qualitative test. The quantitative test will allow us to see how much of that virus is actually in your body. These are the two tests that we have currently for COVID-19. There are three main problems we have with the COVID-19 virus testing right now. So let's say that you get an antibody testing that tells you, yes, you have antibodies or you have antibodies against COVID-19, which could mean you could have had the virus in the past. What we don't know what this means is, are you actually immune to the virus? Because when you have antibodies, we don't know exactly how many antibodies that you have, which begs the question, let's do a quantitative test and we have those. So you can do a quantitative test that lets you know how much of the immunity do you have? How much antibodies do you have? But the question becomes, how much do you need to have for us to be immune? We don't know the answer to that. This virus is only a few months old, so we don't know exactly how many antibodies you need for you to be declared immune. We have that number for the flu. We have that number for measles. We have that number for other viruses that have been around for a long time. We know exactly how many antibodies that you need. And we also know if you have less than that, we can give you a booster to bump you up to the level 
where you are okay and be immune. We have no idea when it comes to the antibody testing about what that number actually is, what the number means, and does that number equal immunity? We just don't know. The second problem is the poor quality of the testing that we have. So there are about 200 tests that are out there, but only four of them have been approved under the FDA, under the EUA, the Emergency Use Authorization, which basically says if you have some evidence that the test may be helpful, you can go ahead and use it. This is very different from all the other ways that we have testing. For most different ways that we can test people, we have very strict criteria. You have to hit this criteria before we can say this is safe for use in the public. With the current pandemic, with things spreading, we have decreased the standards so that Pretty much if you have any information, if it's good, this may be enough that you need to get approved for antibody testing. But as of now, even though there's so many testing out in the market, only four have been approved by the FDA. But having said that, most of the tests are not approved. Most of the tests have not undergone vigorous testing and most are not accurate enough, especially for individual testing. So the problem becomes, are you getting a test that doesn't test what it's supposed to, is inaccurate or is completely false? We just don't know. Now the third problem is the high prevalence of false positive. So now we're gonna go into nerd science. So let me explain some of the statistical information that you need to know to get the good information about these tests. We have two terms that we use, sensitivity and specificity. So sensitivity is the ability of a test to truly see if you actually have had the virus in the past. True positive. Specificity is the capability for the test to tell you if you've not been infected with the virus, which are true negatives. The problem becomes, can you have a false positive? And the answer is yes, and that rate can be very, very high for some of these tests. In fact, even the best tests that are out there have a 5% false positive rate. What does that mean? So let me give you an example. So let's say you have a community of 100 people, and out of those 100 people, five people actually have COVID-19. So a 5% positive rate means that five additional patients will be falsely positive when actually they were actually negative. This means they will come back as actually having had the virus when in fact they didn't. So that means that you have 10 positive tests, five that are truly positive and five that are inaccurately positive or the false positive. So when you check the accuracy, it's only about 50% accurate. That test is only about 50% accurate. That's just a flip of the coin. That's it, a 50-50 shot of that test being accurate. And the reason for that is because we have such a low prevalence of the disease. Not a lot of people in this population actually have the disease. So let's change that. Let's say that in this new scenario, same 100 people, but 50 people actually have COVID-19 and cleared the virus. That means 50 people tested positively using that same 5% false positive rate. This means that still the same five people will test positive inaccurately, but because we have more and more people who have the virus, the prevalence is higher. This means that this is a more accurate test. It is 90% accurate. And this is the issue that we currently have right now with COVID-19 is that we do not have a high enough prevalence, a high enough ratio of people actually having the virus. And so because of that, it really skews the number. That 5% false positive rate can really change how accurate a test is. But here's the other issue with the false positive rate is that this will make people think that they had the virus but they are immune to this. This is such dangerous thinking. What this can lead to is that it can allow people to not do the things that can protect them, whether it's staying at home, social distancing, wearing a mask. Hey, if I've had the virus and I think I'm okay, why would I need to do social distancing? Why would I need to wear a mask? Why would I need to just be at home? I am protected, I am free. And this is the scary thing that I am worried about with these false positive rates. And I will tell you that for my own behavior, I thought the same thing. I actually underwent antibody testing as a part of a clinical trial. And I was speaking to my wife and I spoke to her, hey, if I've had the virus, maybe I don't have to wear my mask. Maybe I can go visit my parents. Maybe I can do the things that I have not been doing. But then obviously my wife, being the much smarter one than me, told me, hey, that is completely wrong because you have that false positive rate. And despite that, just because you had the virus, it does not mean that you are immune against the virus. I came back negative, but I'm sure 
that if I did come back positive, there, I may have second thoughts. Or if other people who are not aware of what's going on, if they come back as being falsely positive, meaning they had the virus, but they cleared it, they may think they're immune and they can still have the risk of catching the virus and still getting very, very sick. So my recommendation for you guys is on an individual basis at this point in time, I would not get antibody testing because the data is not very good. We don't have a lot of disease prevalence, which means that the false positive rate can really skew the results. And there may be behavior changes that may be associated with a false positive test. Having said that though, if you're part of a clinical trial like I was, if you're part of a research study, this is a good thing to maybe get because this allows us to get more information for what's going on so we can better make adjustments for what we need to do for the future. Guys, I want to thank you for watching. If you are interested in how you can stay calm during quarantine, click right here. Or if you're wondering what are some easy things you can do today to help out with your health, click right here. But guys, stay happy and stay healthy. Thanks. So for those guys who are joining for the first time, it's, I can't speak today. When I got really, really sick with some unknown viral illness, number one, I'll talk about exactly what are antibodies. Sorry. To evade into a cell. Once inside, once it is inside the cell, it will go and... Same thing with the chicken pox as well. We don't get, we don't get the chicken pox... Stool, stool virus... Nerd science here, but let me explain exactly what we need. Let me explain exactly what we... Let me explain exactly what we mean when it comes to this. So let me... It is the ability to correctly identify those people who have had the testing no, golly. so it is the set it is the accuracy of testing golly. sorry totally messed it up five that are inaccurately positive or the false pub or the false this means now that this means that this because what this can lead to is people not a doing what this can lead to is all right